This video has been sponsored by the Cinepak pre-animated camera add-on for Blender. More about that later. So last year I made a video where I recreated an old masterpiece painting using 3D software. A lot of people since then have asked me to recreate another painting using Blender, so I figured this time it would be fun to tackle a really famous painting. I settled on the arrangement in grey and black number no. 1 by James Whistler, better known as Whistler's mother. I started off this project with a base mesh which I just got out of Make Human. If you've never used Make Human before, you might want to check out my video called I Made a Cyberpunk Girl in Blender or something like that, where I explained a little bit more detail about how the software works. Once I had the base mesh though, I just applied a multi-res modifier and I started sculpting in the likeness. Luckily, I managed to find a picture on the internet of what Anna Whistler actually looked like in real life which was a decent reference, although she is much younger here than she is in the painting, believe it or not, but it was still really helpful just to have a view of her head from another angle. I prefer to use the multi-res modifier if I'm sculpting on top of a base mesh, because it's basically non-destructive. The original base mesh is kept intact and you don't have to re at the end of the sculpting or unwrap the UVs, which is really good because I despise doing both of those things with a passion. I wasn't trying to get a perfect likeness for the woman, so I actually moved on from the sculpting stage to make the environment fairly quickly. I just applied this basic plaster material that I found on the internet for the wall, and I just had to tile it a few times using the mapping node so that it would fit. But I also wanted to add another layer of grunge onto the wall, and the easiest way to do that was to create a new UV slot and to match it to the grunge texture. Then I mixed that grunge texture into the base material and I used the new UV map that I made as the vector of the material, which you can do just using the UV node. Since the main material and the grunge now have two different separate UVs, you can scale, rotate, and move the dirt layer around with the UV editor, and it doesn't mess up the actual main texture underneath. To make the wood siding, I just separated part of the wall with a loop cut, and then I used the custom bevel profile tool to add a little bit of extra detail. I absolutely love this feature just for adding extra details into furnishings. You can pretty much just draw any shape you like into the curve editor and it's going to look good. The first floorboard texture that I added looked a little bit pants, but luckily I managed to track down a better one on the internet that just needed a little bit of tweaking to the colour. I did my usual trick of adding loads of loop cuts to line them up with the floorboard and then kind of extruding things out and rotating them so the floor looks a little bit less perfect. I've talked more about how to do this in a previous video which I'll link below, but once I finished all this I did realise that the entire floor is covered in a rug and it was a complete waste of time. Oh well. The rug itself was just an image texture that I found on some carpet stores website and I added a normal map just to give it a little bit of extra texture and then I used the cloth modifier to simulate some of the folds and wrinkles. I did have this weird issue where the cloth was like sliding across the floor even with full friction and things like that so I just pinned one edge into place so that couldn't happen anymore. Just like I did with the wall earlier on I also mixed in a little bit of a grunge texture just to make the rug look a little bit less pristine and a bit more worn out. The pattern for the curtains were based on an image I found on the internet which I just edited in Photoshop. I used a normal map of some threads and I mixed them in in such a way that the pattern would look like it's kind of embroidered into the fabric. Once again this was a total waste of time, not visible in the slightest in the final render. Then I just had to run a little cloth simulation to get all the folds in the curtain. If you want to know exactly how this is done you're in luck because I've covered that before in a video which I'll link in the description. Basically, it's just an animated shape key that changes the scale of the mesh while the animation is running, so you get all the nice folds in the fabric. At this point, I started nailing down exactly where the camera was going to go and what settings I would use. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to exactly match the perspective of the painting, because it's basically an impossible perspective, but it wasn't too hard to get something similar since it's a fairly basic camera placement. If you want to add some more complex camera moves to your scenes, you should check out the sponsor of this video, the Cinepak pre-animated camera add-on. The Cinepak is a compilation of 50 pre-animated, fully customizable camera moves that you can add to your Blender projects for an instant touch of extra production value. There's a really nice range of camera moves like pans, camera flyovers, and even this drunk point of view shot, which I really like. 
there's more being added all the time as well. If you do a lot of animations or you do product design work, this is a really great tool just to speed up your workflow because you can simply drag and drop cameras straight into the scene. So if I wanted to add a 360 turntable to this scene, I can just find the right camera and they all have these nice little previews and then you just drag that in and append the whole camera collection and then we can obviously customize the controllers and things to aim the camera exactly where we want it to be. Sorry that little demonstration was a bit cursed by the way. I saw that pause in Mixamo and I couldn't help myself. I used Mixamo for the rigging because the base mesh did come with an armature already but it was doing wee little things to this girl's finkies and frankly I couldn't be bothered to fix it so I used Mixamo because it's lazy and it'll automatically rig the character for me. Mixamo can't handle really high poly meshes though and this is where the multi-res modifier comes in handy because I could just drop down the resolution all the way back to the base mesh and apply all that extra detail as a normal map. Baking the high res sculpt is easy, you just set the multi-res modifier to zero and you create a new image slot in the skin material node tree. Leave the image slot selected but don't connect it to anything and I like to use a 32-bit float with at least 4k resolution so you get all the nice details. Baking doesn't need a lot of samples, I use 10 here, I think you can actually just get away with one. Then in the bake tab you just need to select bake from multi-res and hit the bake button. And if you've done all that right you'll now get a normal map which has all the details of the top level of the multi-res modifier and you can apply it to the base mesh. I already have this bump map plugged in for the skin which was just like pores and small wrinkles but luckily the bump node has a normal map input so you can just combine both of those together. You guys have probably seen Mixamo before if you've seen any of my fairly recent videos but it's basically a free auto rigging tool. You just line up a few markers and it automatically generates a rigged character ready for animation. I found the animation for this one on Mixamo which was pretty similar to the pause I needed and I imported that into Blender and I got rid of all of the keyframes apart from the first one which I just moved along a little bit. And then I reset all of the bones back to their original rotation using Alt R. That way I had this nice little animation which would be helpful when I was making the dress. I didn't record any video of the dress being made. Actual modeling the thing was fairly easy but trying to get this huge ridiculous dress to drape in a manner that actually looked okay was like wrestling a fucking pig. It was awful. Guys, I spent half a day on this and I just don't want to relive it. So we're going to skip that part. But the shoes were actually just straight out of Make Human and I just modified them slightly and retextured them. I thought they looked okay. I did have this weird issue though where a few of our toesies were peeping out so I had to amputate our feet. That's not a sentence you say very often. The bonnet cap thing that she's wearing was also really tricky. Not only does it look ridiculous, but it was actually much harder to make than I expected. The main cap part was made just by duplicating part of a scalp and then I sculpted on top of it. And then all of the lace for her cap and for the dress was basically just using alpha transparency with an image texture. I made that all sound a lot simpler than it was, the whole bonnet thing was a real pain in the ass. The hair is always a bit tricky in Blender too, but luckily she doesn't have much hair on show. I actually probably spent longer than necessary just getting the hair to look okay. Um, since she's wearing that bonnet thing, you really can't see it apart from a little strip of hair down the side. I basically just used the particle edit brushes to comb her hair into place and pretty much everything else was left on default settings. Finally, I noticed that in the painting she's wearing a wedding band on her finger. It's a really small detail, I wanted to add it in but I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it. So I literally just extruded out a ring from her finger and I slapped a gold material onto it and it looked fine. So finally it was time to render it out. The original painting looked like this, wait a minute, the original painting looked like this, just to jog your memory, and here's my take on the painting. I didn't really do any extra editing or compositing, you're basically seeing the raw render here. I was really happy with how this one turned out. As always, there's tons of little extra things that I would like to improve, but my time isn't unlimited and there's only so long you can spend on a render before you have to call it done. If you'd like to see me create another famous painting in the future, let me know in the comments. Maybe you've got a specific painting in mind that you'd like to see. 
If you're a member of my Patreon, you'll be able to download the blend file for this in the next few days. Remember to check out the link in the description to get the camera cinepack, and don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button while you're down there.